Okay, so maybe we'll get started. So today we have Kieran from EPCC giving uh, a talk uh, based, on, based on his uh, co contribution from earlier this year uh, about the automated service monitoring during the deployment of Archer 2. So whenever you're ready, Kieran, take it away. Of course. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about a few things, some background on, on monitoring, um, some background on Archer 2, some content on what sort of monitoring, mod, um, monitoring we do, and then we're going to talk about the impact that had on the service deployment of Archer 2, um, and finally, where things might go in the future. So I'm guessing everyone's fairly well aware, but Archer 2 is a Cray EX system. It's got 5,860 compute nodes, and it's homogenous with each one having two AMD Epic 774264 core processors. We've got a slingshot interconnect. Um, it's managed by the Shasta cluster management software, which is now called uh, the Cray management system, I believe. Um, it's got three five petabyte luster file systems with one, one petabyte NVMe luster file system. It's hosted at the ACF, uh, which is EPCC's dedicated data center, and it's the successor to Archer. Um, our position in Archer 2 EPCC is that we offer service provision, that is effectively system management and administration, as well as operation at the service desk, as well as computational science and engineering, which is uh, everything to do with the application software that we do effectively. We also offer accommodation in that we host the system. So some background. Um, some of you may remember that Archer 2 experienced what we'll call an extended and somewhat troubled deployment. Um, there were a number of issues around uh, the development and scaling, both of the Cray EX and the management stack and the slingshot networking. Um, because of these issues, we, we had a phased transition. Um, many of you, of you will have worked on the four cabinet system that we worked with for some time until such time as we were able to deploy the full 23 cabinet system. Um, the original deployment timeline was that in February 2020, Archer would have been decommissioned. Um, in March 2020, Archer 2 would have been delivered to the ACF, and in May 2020, Archer 2 would be made available to the users. Um, the actual final deployment timeline was that in July 2020, um, a four cabinet system was delivered to the ACF. This was hosted in a separate computer room to that used for Archer and now Archer 2's full system. Um, in October, we were able to make that four cabinet system available to early access users. I don't know why there's a hyphen in the middle of that. Um, in November, the four cabinet system was made available to all users. Um, in January of 2021, Archer was decommissioned. In February of 2021, Archer 2's full, full 23 cabinets were delivered. And finally, in November, we were able to make access to that system available to all users. Um, as you can see, there was a, uh, an extended deployment for that service. So monitoring is what we're here to talk about today. Um, as we're about to discuss, automated monitoring played a key role in Archer 2. We were motivated to include it Okay, I'm sorry, I think, my apologies for the slides being presenting slightly oddly. I am hoping that nothing is cut off, but let me just double check that I'm not cutting off any content. Um, no, we're not. I think it's just phasing it across the whole slide. Uh, we were motivated to in, in, include uh, automated monitoring from uh, day one. At that point, we had something like four years of experience working with monitoring technologies. I think I'd say that's four years of experience working with the specific monitoring technologies. We had looked at others in the past. Um, and our previous experience had been that there are massive benefits in reducing staff workloads, improving response time, and providing un insight when responding to problems. Um, So as a whole, we manage a variety of HPC and research computing services in addition to, to critical support infrastructure. Our sysadmins spend a lot of time tracking the state of these systems. Um, and problem detection and diagnosis typically looks, requires looking in multiple locations, at least without automated monitoring. 
it's time intensive, it's difficult, and it requires a constant widen awareness. You would, you inevitably miss things, frankly. It's also difficult to effectively diagnose new systems um, because team members are often under pressure to get things up and running. What we need is a needed really was a single pane of glass approach to be able to look in one place and know what's happening. What we chose for this was Check MK. This was originally a Nagios extension, and it's now a Nagios derivative monitoring system. Nagios is a, another monitoring system. Um, this has many checks available uh, already. Public, um, some of them included, some of them just available to find online. Some of them are Nagios checks you can import. Some of them are Check MK checks proper. It's very simple to create new checks. Um, it's very simple to add new hosts, and it's possible to alter check parameters from a central user interface. The Check MCK server at EPCC was first deployed in 2015, and it is now absolutely core to our service management for HPC services. Since 2015, it's allowed us to provide um, bespoke integrated monitoring solutions for a variety of HPC technologies, in addition to the, the basic monitoring it provides. Some follow on. So in order to take advantage of the data gathered, we also deployed a graphite metric server and a Grafana analytics and visualization server. There's also some data that goes directly into that graphite metric server bypassing the check MK. That's particularly data where we're not interested in alerting based upon it. Over time, this led to us developing a number of specialized checks that we use. So we have things like checks for DDN controllers. DDN are a company that makes um, effectively luster storage. Um, they also, I think, run luster these days. Uh, GPFS cluster monitoring, uh, special checks we put into PBS Pro to check unplaceable or orphan jobs. Those used to crop up fairly often on Archer 1 and would effectively freeze the scheduling. And Omnipath Network Health. Omnipath is a, uh, uh, an interconnect that's used with a number of systems. So I'll move on now. So the actual Archer 2 monitoring deployment um, is based upon separate monitoring servers that are deployed for each system or group of systems. And these are controlled from a central check MK instance. Our central check MK instance is called Panopticon, and we call each of the local or regional monitoring servers a Panoptiling. This approach was found to improve performance and increase resiliency, um, and adding or removing individual servers is very simple from our perspective. Um, each monitored host has a check MK instance agent installed, which communicates to the server via TCP. Um, this agent collects various host health and performance metrics and posts these to the monitoring server. Um, the check and case server passes this data to the graphite server, which processes the data using carbon demons and stores it in graphite specialized database. So effectively, we pass everything we're going to discuss here to check MK in the first instance, and that then moves that on to the graphite graphing server for availability there and to explore, to be able to explore that data through graphs. So this is just a little um, a, a diagram that covers what, what our infrastructure looks like. Um, we've got a few new things here. So here you've got the Archer 2 cluster. Um, you can see visualization nodes, master nodes, worker nodes, and storage nodes. So the data visualization nodes and the login nodes are nodes you'll work with. The data visualization nodes support the serial queue, and the, and the login nodes are the login nodes. I, I'm not going to go into detail on that. Um, so on those, you'll find all sorts of built-in agent plugins like DNS client checks to make sure that's working, luster mount checks, login sessions, and ones we've defined like Slurm and LNET stats, that, some of which we can discuss later. The master, the worker, and the storage nodes are all three types of administration node that, that, that the system manages. Um, we don't actually have the check MK agent running on each compute node. That's considered to be more burden than is needed. Um, we're able to gather the health of compute nodes centrally via various ways anyway. There are things like health checks and, um, uh, and uh, slurm epilogues, which also look at the health of those nodes so that we don't have to 
worry about them on an individual basis. Um, also feeding into CheckMK, you have the Archer 2 support infrastructure. So things like um, the SAFE, LDAP, NTP, these can all feed in. Um, and then in the monitoring core, you can see we've got distributed CheckMK. So that funnels everything, first of all, into its own database, but then into the carbon graphite. Um, sorry, the graphite carbon database. Um, and then that's all available to our various sysadmins, project managers, and to, and to the HPE support team via those interfaces. So everyone can have a single central point of view. We do have email available from CheckMK, which is used to alert in certain situations. It's even set to um, alert directly the HPE Cray team by pager. Um, so that if there are serious issues, they can be dealt with at whatever hour they occur at. So as I say here, there's three three methods to access the system. All critical not notifications are dispatched appropriate to appropriate email addresses, including HPE pagers. And then there's the CheckMK website and the Grafana website. So this is the CheckMK front page. Just to give you an example, this is what we uh, we have several monitors dotted around the office I'm in right now um, with with effectively this available so that we can glance up and see the situation of services. Uh, we've deliberately got some red here so that you can view them. Um, you can see in the upper right, there is a section called host problems. So that, that tells you which hosts are having issues. And then at the bottom left, you've got service problems, which looks at things from a service point of view. Um, you can see you've got some services that have timed out and you can see you've got some hosts with uh, which appear to be down. This is a quick view of Grafana. Um, this is of the Archer 2 page we use internally. So this is one that's been defined and shared with a number of people within the team here. Um, it changes reasonably often as new things are added. You can see we've got a few things there. The upper left box you can see is the login sessions, and you can see that obviously going up as people start to uh, get up in the morning. And the sort of the flat bit you can see is the number of people who just leave their, their login sessions running overnight. Um, the upper right box is about self-reported power, but that also tracks, along with the power, that tracks the allocated number of nodes. So you can see that there's actually a, a reasonably good relation there. Well, if you were seeing it more broadly, you'd, you'd actually be able to see a solid relation between the number of allocated nodes and the number of, and the amount of power being drawn. It doesn't show too well there, sadly. It generally tracks reasonably well. The bottom left is the state of the allocated nodes. So that's really just the same as what you'd see from um, the Archer 2 status page, which has an equivalent graph. There are different types of um state of various nodes are colored appropriately one thing to note is that since this one went in we've actually managed to add a new capability following a slurm upgrade and that is that we have um nodes that are in the state planned also highlighted so if you look on the status page now you'll sometimes see i can't remember what color but you'll see planned status I, I, indicated and that means that nodes are effectively waiting to start a specific job the bottom right, very busy graph, is the power by each local um, half cabinet set of power supplies. That's why the amount used is so different. It varies across what's happening on the system. Um, it's not really something we can look at and see very easily what's going on, but we keep it anyway. So I'll move on to custom checks now, unless anyone has any questions about monitoring more broadly. No, okay. So custom checks for Archer 2 monitoring. So these are all check MK checks. Um, we deploy these as bash scripts placed in an appropriate directory. There's just a, a directory which check MK checks for doing these things. You can actually deploy these checks as any language you like. I just tend to use bash because I've always tended to use bash. Um, I guess I'm just not smart enough for Python. Um, I heard a ping. Does that mean something? 
Oh, uh, is the data ephemeral or stored long term? So the data is stored um, in Grafana over a long term. However, the um, the granularity is not retained. So you know, it's all, all the checks are stored for a number of days, and then for a length of time after that, they're stored for less. I cannot remember what the exact ones are, but by the time you get out long enough, you've got one check every four hours retained. Does that answer the question, Adrian? Grand. Um, you actually can you can specify specific things to last for longer. We just worry about um, storage capacity. So you can do, you can actually deploy a check via any language supported by the host. It it it's, it's effectively calls it as a as an executable rather than a script. It doesn't care what it's in. Um, the only requirement is that the check is that, that the output of the command be provided in the correct format. Um, once deployed, the appropriate directory is then discovered. Yeah, sorry, the appropriate. Once deployed to the appropriate di directory, you then have to discover this check via the check MK web interface. But that's really very simple. So a few notes on custom checks. These are ones that I de were deployed for Archer 2. Power monitoring. This runs on the management node. There's no actual node called the management node. It's called the, uh, maybe it's called, the I can't remember. One of the admin nodes this runs on. Uh, it's based upon a script that HPE originally provided. Uh, and all it does is it PDSHs to each of a set of cabinet controllers. Um, it gathers power data found in the slash var file directory listed there and stores it for analysis. It iterates over the data to analyze the power and the voltage. So it reports not it reports details for each cabinet as well as a whole and uh, sorry, it then outputs the power draw for the entire cabinet and then it outputs the power draw for the entire system. Um, we also retain the voltage on a per rectifier basis. I don't think we found any use for that information so far, but you know, we have space for the data and you might as well collect it. This is some of the, an example of the data we get back from that. It's just the two graphs I showed before. You can see on the top that we've got the whole system power and on the bottom again, uh, the per cabinet basis data, although it's actually per half cabinet. It's, it's each cabinet has, I believe, two rectifier shelves. Second custom check to look at is node state monitoring. So this is node state in terms of what state Slurm thinks the node is in. This runs on our login nodes and it's clustered on our login nodes. So, so long as one of those login nodes is reporting it, uh, check MK will pull it into the appropriate place. Um, we find that's very good that we, we don't have to worry about which ones are running. Um, this check is also portable. We have written it deliberately so that it will drop onto any any node which can see a Slurm instance um, and report that information. Um, the process it uses is that it runs sinfo, and the first thing it does, uh, well, it's a specific sinfo command with an incantation that I can't remember, but. It's S info at the end of the day. Um, it stores the output of S info. It pulls the name of the various partitions from that S info output. And for each of the partitions, it stores the number of nodes in each of the possible Slurm node states. So we're actually, you know, we have we have a good number of partitions on Archer 2 um, for a variety of purposes. Some of them are just for, for admin and management, you know, for, for managing nodes and things like that, and for managing maintenances. So we report uh, you know, a number of things back, um, but the only one we actually use most of the time is just the, the standard um, partitions details, because that captures all the nodes. Um, and here's an example of some node state data for Archer 2 via Grafana. So this is over a period across uh, a large amount of February, just sorry, January and February. That would have been from this year. You can see that we've got a graph there where you can, you can see we've, we've classified everything we think of as down. So that was draining, drain, 
well, draining isn't down necessarily, but we, we've, we've allocated it here. So it's draining, drain, maintenance, and down, and then the total down. We have got a red bar that we were able to manually apply, which indicates once, which indicates the point at which um, a service level agreement has been breached. Yes, this example is before the plan state was available, but the plan state also wouldn't be considered um, down. The plan state is, is considered a, a node in good usage. Uh, this one is attempting to capture how many nodes are, are problematically down, I would say. Um, this is a more recent diagram um, of node state data. And this one, as you can see, does include planned at the top. Um, so if you look somewhere like uh, here, you can see that we've got a, uh, a sort of a drop in usage here. Um, and then that sort of gradually comes down and pops back up. And so what we're seeing there is effectively the system makes space for a job. It, 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 it looks to run. The final custom check we'll cover um, is the login availability more monitoring. Um, so this is run on the check MK server itself because we want it in an external point of view. Um, the Archer 2 login service actually operates with a DNS round robin address. So when you type in login.archer2.ac.uk, what you're doing is you're pulling down a round robin, round robin record from, from a DNS server somewhere um and you're 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 randomly being allocated one of a set of of ip addresses we update that set so that it is the set of login nodes that are currently active so for example we very often have one of the four login nodes out of service for testing and this is completely transparent because we just update the dns records apart appropriately but it does mean that you, you know, it's, in order to test a login service, we then have to point out the DNS round robin address rather than individual nodes. Um, we have a functional test account that has a single factor access available only from the check MK host. We had to make a special special exception to the call for that. The script simply SSHs to the round robin login address with the command exit and takes the output stat the, the exit status of that command and reports it. Um, if it reports it um, as zero all as well, if it reports it as anything else, it's broken. So I'm going to talk a bit now about the impact of these monitoring points. Is there anything anyone wants to uh, ask about the custom checks themselves before I move on? No? OK. Um, so the first impact is really in terms of support for deployment. Um, we generally, early deployment of monitoring was found broadly useful and there's some, some specific items that are worth noting. Um, partially because of the nature of the management system and the management software we're work, working with, DNS was a common bugbear. Um, one of the things that would break most often actually was the DNS setup of the system. A DNS resolution check that actually only checks against, I think, bbc.co.uk, nonetheless was very effective um, in capturing when these were happening so that we could flag them quickly and have them dealt with. Um, we, had some, we had some serious issues uh, caused by some network issues, but it wasn't the immediate Symptom of these network issues was, pro was users having problem accessing, problems accessing the system. Um, Check MK allowed us to very quickly track down what the problem was and identify it as network issues. That was very helpful. Um, one interesting thing actually here is that we had numerous problems with the slingshot at HSN. But one of the first indicators this was happening was usually that in our monitoring, the number of Luster LFS servers available would drop. So we were, you know, we were able to see that and very quickly report to HPE that it looked like there was quite possibly a problem with the slingshot. Um, we were also able to become rapidly aware of a memory leak problem because we just had a little graph that showed what was happening with the memory and we had alerts if, if it became overused. 
um, we were also able to use this to assess when um, when it would become a problem as the, the increase in memory was going up in a straight line. Um, uh, one, one amusing note is that uh, the, Czech, the, the memory leak problem turned out to be the Czech MK agent itself, which, uh, which was a fun one. Um, the monitoring also had a lot of impact on our initial testing. Uh, Archer 2 has what I'll describe as a noticeably larger power profile than its predecessor. I think that's an understatement. Um, I cannot remember what Archer 1 was, but it was significantly less. Archer 2 really sits at the maximum of the design intent for the computer room. Um, so, so we need to take a lot of additional care during the initial testing. During the first testing, um, power was primarily monitored by observing wall level PDUs and via the building management system. So there was some automated reporting of that available, but it wasn't convenient. And we all we did have people checking things in the room at the time. This data was get difficult to access and it wasn't necessarily as accurate as we preferred. HP identified that data was available via the cabinet controllers and made this available to us via script. We then stole the script um, and turned it into check MK monitoring checks, which allowed us to gather that data very effectively. Um, we obviously took this provision and verified the figures we were getting um, at the wall level PDUs in our building management system. And that allowed us to build confidence that what we were reporting was actually correct and useful. Excuse me one moment. Apologies, there was some noise outside. Um, we were then able to use monitoring to profile the power draw of the system running various codes, including HPL um, and the Archer 2's, well, the various Archer 2 procurement application benchmarks. The availability of this data also allowed us to have the system useful for more hours. So HP were very keen to um, to work on the system during the US time in order to try and get into service as early as possible. We weren't initially hugely comfortable with that, but once we could make the monitoring data available to everyone, um, it, it allowed us to build confidence and it also allowed us to agree that they would, you know, if they were using the system, they would monitor that data. We agreed the thresholds at which they would stop work and this allowed things to continue very effectively. So for the next point is the HPL benchmarking. And this is one of the real places where it was key. So the monitoring was again useful during the benchmarking. Um, the efforts to prepare a suitable benchmark for the top 500 run. Over the course of a, a week, we made a number of attempts to produce a suitable result. I think we must have kicked off a good 10 to 20 individual runs, if not more. Um, a lot of these were interrupted by node failures or HSN problems. It was it was somewhat frustrating. Despite the interruptions, we were actually able to complete a number of runs. Um, it very quickly became evident that we were seeing behavior that we were that I've described here as power cycling behavior. Usage would um, repeatedly and suddenly drop for a short period of time in a sort of a sawtooth pattern very often. Um, in order to figure out what was going on, we ran single node HPL across the system um, in order to identify nodes that were performing persistently poorly. These nodes were drained to remove or reduce the problem. Um, and we effectively had to run that process iteratively, um, check, check the performance of all nodes, try and run things again until we got a good run. And eventually we got a good run. Um, we managed to get a result of 19.5 pe petaflops, which put Archer 2 at 22 in the top 500 uh, in November of last year. Um, I'd also note that I think that put us in the top five or something like it for, for CPU systems um, and systems without a GPU. Um, I've got some benchmarks, some graphs here that show you what we're talking about. I will note that these aren't, um, these are based on data gathered aside at the time and not from our Grafana because by the time I went into Grafana, 
um, the granularity of the data had reduced as it's intended to. So you can see here um, how we had power cycling on a run that was heavily impacted um, and got and got a lower score, 16.8 petaflops. Um, you can particularly see, they see significant individual drops of places like this, but also a fairly deep sawtooth pattern going along throughout. Um, this is a run that was con conducted very shortly after that one. Um, you've got much less sawtooth thing, but you do have an individual section here, which wasn't ideal. Um, finally, this is the, the, the final submitted run. These aren't all directly comparable. I think this node, this, this one actually had some more nodes. Um, you can see we do have some sawtoothing, but we don't have that those big deep drops of the first one. Um, and it ran through very well to 19.5 petaflops. So moving on, um, another area of impact was contractual monitoring. So in order to support UKRI um, in monitoring the service during the acceptance period, um, there was a requirement to present a single view of all service attributes relevant to that monitoring, both for UKRI's awareness and so everyone was working off the same data. The key items were node availability, login availability and, and job failures. Um, we exposed data from our graphite to EPCC's service management web application, the SAFE, we did that via a web API over HTTP. The SAFE also receives all our Slurm accounting data, so it's able to, uh, to talk about job failures as well. Um, any authorized stakeholder can use uh, this data to generate a report in the SAFE covering contractual monitoring for any given period. Um, the SAFE does provide fine-grained access control, so only appropriate stakeholders can access this data. Um, and in addition to graphing things for stakeholders, the same method is also used to generate the status graph, or the status and neutralization graph on the Archer 2 status webpage. And this is the contractual monitoring graph. So you can see there's two things here. There's the number of available nodes with the cutoff line here in red, um, which represents the, the contractual requirements. Um, and then in green, you've got the login availability. So where, that's, where that disappears, that means the login nodes have become unavailable. So a few comments on future work. There are some potential improvements to the Archer 2 monitoring to look at. There's possibilities of log analysis, pulling in long slingshot error feeds, um, per job luster statistics, and uh, data-driven intrusion detection. Um, we're interested in making the data we collect more generally available to our user community. So there is a consideration of at some point making some version of our Grafana visible to users. And there's an also a note that we please consider it with other site, but I don't think that's as relevant here. Um, our conclusions are that live monitoring and graphing makes an extremely valuable contribution, that the value often presents itself in unexpected ways, that the ability to rapidly and flexibly deploy new checks in response to emerging events and requirements is also a particular value. And finally, that an, impact, an, an imperfect check implemented rapidly is often superior to an ideal check later. Um, with apologies to Wayne Gretzky, you lose 100% of the data you don't collect. Uh, finally, um, we believe that automating the contractual monitoring of a service can be valuable. Um, it helps to assure service partners and funders and users that the system is working correctly. Given the delayed start to Archer 2, we found this particularly helpful. Um, Archer 2 has now been in full service for almost, well, no, it's now been in service for longer than that because I wrote these slides for something that was a while ago. Um, we've got now well in excess of 2,500 active users and utilization on the order of 90%. I believe we now beat 90%. And we consider automated monitoring to have been key in making this possible. And that's all I've got. Does anybody have any questions?
Um, so the system was still being brought towards service and the dodgy underperforming nodes, I think were followed up by HPE. And I think it was generally found to be one of a number of um, things related to the hardware being deployed. I don't think there was anything in common or suspect between them. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Alexa, is there anything? Um, no, I think that's it. Great. Th thank you very much for giving this talk. Um, I, I think uh, we, we have another question from Brian. Uh, do we have prologue epilogue checks? So we also, in parallel, have a number of things. I th think there is a prologue and epilogue in place, but we're not actively using them. Um, well, sorry, we've not deployed anything on them from the EPCC side. I believe that HPE have used them. We do have manual health checks we'd run as well. So these, these are not our only checks. Um, how easy is it to add in new metrics? It is incredibly simple to add in new metrics. You create a bash script that outputs whatever you want it to output in the correct format, or you draw a bit of text in the right file. Um, so long as you can figure out your right echo commands, you can put it together in minutes. Okay, well, thank you, everyone.